many of my patients um, are looking around at the moment to see are there any new therapies and one of the new therapies that I think people are excited about and perhaps we should just temper that at the moment and see how good it's going to turn out to be but the idea of having a brain surgery that doesn't involve a surgery. So people are very familiar I think with the concept of deep brain stimulation where we put electrodes deep into the brain tissue and um, pass an electric current through there and improve symptoms. But one of the things which in the style of Michael J. Fox appropriately is a bit back to the future is the idea of if you like burning little holes in the brain to affect the tissue that we think will relieve symptoms. So with a brief history lesson on the treatment, the surgical treatment of Parkinson's disease, probably 30 years ago, um, the first pioneers for surgery in Parkinson's realized that actually if you made little cuts or burns deep within the brain, you could improve some of the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. We used to call it lesioning um, and it became an otomy. So just uh, like one sees a laparotomy, these were things like pallidotomies, um, that's referring to a part of the brain called the pallidus, um, and thalamotomies, a part of the brain called the thalamus. Um, that technology, if you like, got superseded by the idea of having something that was adjustable, a deep brain stimulation system where you could increase the amount of current or reduce or change the point of contact. And that became more dynamic and people went in favour of that approach. However, it's quite clear that not everybody wants to have um, holes drilled in their brain, uh, sorry, in their skull and then have these uh, electrodes that pierce the brain. Um, and people got to wondering whether there were any other techniques to cause perhaps little cuts, burns in the brain. And it goes back a little bit um, to the way we used to treat gallstones when we used ultrasound to focus on the gallstones um, so that we could shatter the gallstones and break them up. So we used the intensity, the energy in an ultrasound to do that. And what people have been working on is a technique of doing that in the brain. And the technique has now been published um, and it's uh, uh, going to be available here in Australia. And essentially the, um, the technique is called focused ultrasound. So with this technique, um, patients would have to have a, a significant set of assessments. The probability is the patients who will respond best are those who have more in the way of tremor rather than any other symptom. And the idea will be to say, okay, we're going to get a very detailed scan of your brain and then lie you in a scanner where we're able to keep track of that area. And then I think the device feels like a helmet um, filled, I think, with a sort of fluid um, which allows the, the ultrasound waves to be conducted much more efficiently. It's a very long uh, procedure. I think it takes several hours and it's an incremental procedure where the patient lies awake, there is no general anaesthetic, um, and then you can detect whether or not the surgery, surgery with no operation, is actually having a benefit. So, for example, if the tremor or the function of a hand was to be improved by putting these small areas of damage into the brain in a strategic fashion. Now, as I said, this uh, treatment probably is going to be more effective for patients with tremor and in actual fact the original studies were done for not Parkinson's but a disease called essential tremor where the hands generally shake when they're being used. But I think we are seeing more uh, compelling evidence to put this therapy into other patients, patients with dystonic tremor um, and also patients with Parkinson's disease ultimately. So it is something that I think will become uh, uh, available in Australia. I think the pros and the cons of whether you'd like to have a procedure where you can't have anything done afterwards um, have to be weighed up against things like deep brain stimulation and of course some of the advances with directional deep brain stimulation. So I think it's exciting times and it is nice to have some options but people need to know exactly what they're being offered and what the outcomes might be.